Hey everyone, um, I get asked this question all the time is how many days a week should I be training and how long should my workouts be taking? So I'm gonna hopefully help clear some of this up. Hey, there are some myths out there and some confusion as to whether or not you could be training on consecutive days or not. Um, ultimately, when you first start to lay out your training routine or your plan, hey, you have to first start be thinking about your schedule. Now your schedule is gonna change whether or not you're in the in season or whether or not you're in the off season. In season, it gets a little bit tricky because you have to take into account, hey, how much are you practicing? How much are you playing? Off season, it's kind of um, looking at it from with a clean slate. You have all the time in the world to be spending time in the gym and, and training, getting prepared for that next in season. So um, once you have your schedule figured out, hey, how many days a week are you available is the first question that you have to answer. Okay. Um, after that, then you have to start looking at, hey, what specifically are your workouts going to consist of? So after you take our home assessment, hey, you have a really good idea as to whether or not you're going to be focusing more so on mobility and hey, whether or not you're going to be training heavy with strength or whether or not your program is going to be geared towards power. You have to figure out, hey, which one is it going to be primarily in that program? Um, on the mobility side of things, you can do that every single day of the week. Okay. Um, I can tell you right now, I train people who do mobility twice every single day of the week for 30 minutes a day, and they make leaps and bounds in their progress towards um, increasing their golf game. Um, on the strength side of things, uh, there's a lot of people out there who, doesn't, who don't think that it's necessary to train on back-to-back -back days or consecutive days. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's a myth. That's not true. There's ways to work around this. Um, setting up a strength and conditioning program, you can definitely train on a Monday and then come back and train 24 hours later on a Tuesday. There's just ways that you have to work around it in that on one day you might do an upper body day and on the second day you might do a lower body day. Or you can also switch it up to where on your Monday you do a heavier or a higher volume day and on Tuesday you do a lighter, lower volume day. Um, there are definitely ways that you can set it up among those uh, two options. With that, you also have to take in your power considerations. Now, um, power training gets a little bit tricky because on the outside, you can't necessarily see the fatigue or you can't see the actual exertion that you're creating with, with power from one day to the next, but power is deeply rooted throughout your central nervous system. You're primarily uh, fatiguing or taxing your central nervous system. This is very important. And if there's one thing I want you to take from this is listen up here. When you're training power, and this goes for uh, your round that you're gonna play this afternoon, and that's all power hitting drivers off the tee, Hey, you have to give yourself um, time to recover off of a power training event. So think about your power system is your central nervous system. Hey, if you go through and you play around or you do a very power intense workout this afternoon, hey, you just took your V8 sports car and you just bumped it down to like two cylinders. Hey, you have to give yourself at least 24 hours before you can turn around and you're the V8 back on the track again. So anytime you're training anything super intensive with power, I suggest you take at least one day of recovery in between. Um, a couple other things to take into consideration when you start thinking about laying out your pro or laying out your program and your routine is one, you have to be consistent. So um, I, I shake my head way too much when people take the off season and train really, really hard for three months. And then during the in season, they wipe everything clean. They don't step into a gym. And all I do is play golf, play golf, play golf, play golf. And then you come back the next off season and you're right back to where you were, if not steps behind. Okay? The number one rule with setting up your training routine is to make sure that you are consistent. You are training year round and you keep your training, whether it be three days, four days, five days a week, you keep that consistent all throughout. And okay? the second is recoverability. So going from one day to the next, obviously, yes, you have to recover. There are ways to speed up or to encourage recovery, but you also have to know that recovery cannot be pushed. Hey, you cannot, um, you cannot expedite the recovery process. There are things that you can do such as rolling, such as stretching, nutrition, sleep, that can help enhance the recovery period, but you also must take into account from one day to the next that you have to put an investment into recovery because ultimately at the end of the day, recovery is just as important as it is uh, to do the actual training in itself. So a um, couple takeaways from this is one, yes, it is okay to train on back-to-back -back days on a Monday, Tuesday, or whether it be like a Thursday, Friday. Um, two, you can do mobility every single day of the week. That is still considered training. And three, you must be training consistent year round. So um, I hope you found this um, resourceful. If you liked it, go ahead, give us a like and subscribe and check out the next episode.